everyone, Allison here from Lofty Loops Yarns, and I want to say a big hello and welcome to uh, any new viewers or any returning viewers. Thanks so much for coming back. This is a weekly podcast about knitting, spinning, hand-dyed yarn, and other fibery goodies, and uh, things may look a bit different. I have a new camera. Hooray! Um, so exciting to actually have a real camera that isn't hopefully going to give me any fits um, and I can just record and bonus I can see myself. I can actually see what you guys are seeing so hooray for keeping things in focus right? <laughs> um, so let's see I'm super stoked uh, about having the new camera and I've been waiting all week to finally sit down and podcast for you guys today so I'm coming to you guys with no show notes just lots of excitement and lots of coffee. Um, I do have a finished object to share with you guys today as well as quite a few uh, works and progresses and to be honest most of them are socks so if you're into sock knitting definitely stick around and check it out because there's gonna be lots of socks to see on today's episode. Um, I believe this is episode 20 what? We hit 20 episodes, you guys. Holy cow. I never even thought I would make one and let alone make the second one after that, but I've hit 20. And I want to thank each and every one of you that returns every week to chat along with me or watch me or knit along with me, whatever it is that you guys are doing um, with me in the background. I thank you so much for that. Um, I am nearing already um, another crazy milestone for subscribers, which is just bizarre that there are so many of you that um, are into the same things as me. Um, and I love our knitting community and our crochet community and our fiber community, what have you. Um, we are just a wonderful group of people and I'm so happy to be a part of that. So let's see, where should we start? It is July 28th. Yes, it is the 28th. So August is right around the corner. I have no idea where this summer went. Um, literally I felt like the first three months of the year took an eternity to get through and then the weather started warming up and it was just like boom done over which is completely fine with me because if you can't tell by my uh my lovely little uh plaid outfit I have going on I am so looking forward to fall you guys I know most of us uh share that sentiment in the knitting world and the fibery world like bring on fall bring on the cool weather, bring on the hand knits, just I'm ready for it. I'm here for it. Let's go. <laughs> Especially Halloween, which is my very favorite, um, my very favorite uh, holiday. So, and I'm really cooking up some awesome ideas for my new uh, holiday color or Halloween colorways that are coming out in the fall line. So, um, I might chat about that a bit later, um, but definitely if you want to. Uh, see what that is going to look like, then you can give me a follow over at Lofty Loops on Instagram. And if you'd rather just follow me uh, on Ravelry and see my projects that I'm working on, you can find me as The Lofty Loops over there. Everything will be linked down below, so uh, no worries. If you didn't catch that, you can find all the information you need in the uh, description box. So definitely check it out if you'd like. All right, let's see. I'm going to grab more coffee. This is so bizarre, you guys, that I can see myself. And I really, really, really hope that means that, like, when I show you projects and things, they'll actually be in focus and you guys can see all the beautiful detail of all the beautiful hand-dyed yarns and the fantastic patterns. I'm so excited. Um, this mug, by the way, um, Kohl's, how great is that? Um, Kohl's had a line, I believe, last fall around Christmas time. Um, or before Christmas even, I'm not sure, but oh, I love it. Uh, I had to snag two or three of them. Also, they're massive. Like, those are huge mugs, you guys. So much coffee can be held in these. All right, first I want to do a little bit of chatting about what you can find over in the Ravelry group. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast and for my hand-dyed yarn company, which is Lofty Loops Yarns. Um, links to my website to find my yarns can be found down below, as well as links to the Ravelry group uh, where we have random giveaways and um, 
what do we do? Random giveaways. We have cals going on right now. There's just chatter threads, things to do uh, to introduce yourself. And I think I may open up a thread uh, where I know I know a lot of makers and I know a lot of you guys um, want to offer um, or want to, you know, help spread the word about what you make. And I'd love to support makers and uh, make purchases from fellow makers and things like that. So I may open up a thread where you guys can share um, maybe what's new in your shop or what's coming to your shop, shop updates. If you guys have coupon codes or um, any deals running, you can go ahead and throw that in that thread. Um, and I will definitely um, scope things out as well as uh, the other people in the Ravelry group. So let me know if you think that's a good idea. I may go ahead and open it and just kind of see how it goes. Um, but again, don't feel obligated. <laughs> um, I just, I think it's fun to spread the word and um, anyway, there is a Cal going on right now. I am co-hosting the Summer Stock Club Cal with Melinda of Rye Flower Knits. Um, she is a fantastic pattern designer. If you guys are unfamiliar with her, please go check her out. She also, uh, has her own podcast, which is a few episodes in, and it's wonderful, and I love spending time with her, so I highly suggest if you guys are in the market for another podcast, uh, go check hers out because she is fantastic. She walks you through some of the things she's designing, um, what she's working on, and then she also has a, a whole section um, based on tech editing stuff. So if you are a pattern designer yourself and you want tips on how to make those better, if you need help, if you need assistance, things like that, definitely she's an awesome resource. Go check her out. Um, but we are moving into the third installment of the Summer Sock Club Cal. Um, you can find tons of information in the Ravelry group, so I won't go into too much detail, but um, we are knitting socks each month. So you uh, purchase the Summer Sock Club Cal from Melinda, and in that you'll get four sock patterns. One is released each month. We are about to hit the third one, and then at the end of it all, you'll get a bonus pattern. So um, that's been super fun. Uh, if you guys have been previous viewers of the podcast, you've seen my progress on the first two socks, and I believe it's Emerson that releases on the 3rd of August. So we are coming up on that very quickly. Um, if you guys have been knitting along uh, on Oakley so far, definitely get your chatter into that chatter thread because I will be drawing random winners out of there on August 3rd when the next pattern releases and then that chatter thread will remain open. You can still chatter in it, but I will no longer be drawing prizes from there. If you happen to finish any of the socks, Within this entire time frame, it does not have to be within that month. Um, if you want to just now join us and get started on any of the released patterns, please feel free to do so. You can put any of your finished sock uh, projects in the FO thread, and at the end of the entire Summer Sock Club Cal, I will be drawing a grand prize uh, winner for a goodie basket out of that thread. Um, you can also jump over to her Ravelry group and enter into her chatter and FO threads as well. And then that just gives you uh, more opportunity for winning prizes. So it's been a lot of fun to watch you guys uh, knit these along with us. And um, I hope you've fallen just in love, just as much in love with her patterns uh, as I have. So she's, she's fantastic. I think that about does it for Ravelry group administrative news. Um, yes. And I also want to mention, I did promise a, a milestone giveaway, and that will happen. Um, I will probably insert a little bit um, later towards the end of this episode. Uh, I, I was unsure if I wanted to have it its own video kind of giveaway information or if I just wanted to include it here. I meant to do it last week um, and just got sidetracked and distracted, and it did not happen, so apologies. Um but yes, stay tuned. There will be a 500 subscriber giveaway towards the end of this podcast if that's something that you are interested in uh, entering into. So moving right along, let me show you what I finished this last week. I am so excited. I was so close last week um, and just did not get there. <laughs> um, but I have finally finished the second sock. Um, of my Sugar Plum Fay colorway. So the first sock has been done for quite a while. Um, it's actually, it's been a shop sample. So when I have done shows and things like that, I've taken it along um, 
Look what I can do, you guys. You can actually see things. Hooray! <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yes, uh, the, the second one was languishing forever and ever, um, and I just put my foot down and continued working on it because coming up here soon, um, I may be able to start wearing these. The only difference between the two is, and it does not bother me, um, the first one I did a fish lips kiss heel. Um, so this is the fish lips kiss. You can kind of see like what a nice join that has, um, <clears throat> which I love a fish lips kiss if I'm paying attention when I'm ready to insert the heel. Nine times out of ten, I'm knitting vanilla socks uh, while I'm watching TV, or maybe we go to the movies, or maybe we're driving around town, um, or kind of what have you. They're just my take-along because they're easy, um, and I don't have to think about them. So most of the time, I actually end up knitting right past where I need to insert the heel, which is the case with this one. Um, so this heel actually got an afterthought. So you can see here that... Um, the decreases, or they're not short rows like they are on the Fish Lips Kiss. They're actually toe decreases, like you would decrease your toe on a cuff down sock. Um, and I do have a video to kind of walk you through that process. I will link it uh, up in the corner if you guys are interested in checking that out. Um, as well as Kirby Werby here on YouTube has a fantastic uh, tutorial. So that is what I go with. I do not place... Um, waist yarn, I just snip. So uh, you can tell, maybe I can show you the difference here. Sorry, still getting used to where <laughs> I'm all backwards on my viewfinder. Uh, so here, hopefully you can kind of see the difference. It does look a tad different, but again, it does not bother me. Um, I have quite a few socks that <laughs> have run into this situation, um, and they wear the same, in my opinion. They're pretty inter interchangeable as far as the wear goes. Um, it just kind of looks a tad different. And again, if I'm using these uh, as a shop sample, I only take the one because I don't need anyone wandering away with an entire pair of socks. Uh, if someone so chooses to be be a turd and wander off uh, with one of my samples, at least they're only getting one sock. And what are you going to do with that? So this is, uh, I should also mention, of course, Lofty Loops Yarns in my Lofty Sock base, and it is Sugar Plum Fay, which was a color from uh, last Christmas time. So it is it has not been stocked in the shop, uh, but it will likely be coming back here in the next few months as we head into winter. So hooray, finished socks. So yay, finally a finished object, you guys, and a long languishing finished object. I mean, those things, that has been waiting for its second sock for so long, um, but it's done. So. Hooray! That means that I get to cast on new things. Oh, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. Um, the cast on itis is so real, you guys. <laughs> um, so that is going to bring me right into works in progress or what I have been working on this week. I do want to preface this section to say there was quite a bit more that I was working on. Um, I've been fairly anti-monogamous. Polygamist? I've been, is that polygamist with my knitting? <laughs> um, I have still been working through my Zweig. Um, I'm not going to show you guys today because there's not a monumental amount of progress. Um, it's just stocking it in the round on the body. Once I do actually get the body finished and get the ribbing around the body, you know, I cast off for that and start the sleeves, I will bring it back and show it here on the podcast. Uh, but until then, there's not going to be much point in... Uh, you know, whatever. But it is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's getting there. I'm so excited. I still have my um, November 1st deadline for myself so I can wear it to VKL in Minneapolis. Oh, I want to wear it so bad. That being said, I'm going to quickly show you uh, a tiny bit of progress that I've made on Oakley, which is the second portion of the Summer Sock Club Cal. And Oakley is living... Sorry. Oakley is living in this adorable sheepy bag that I got from my wonderful friend Amy. Look at how cute they are. I keep forgetting that I can like show you guys things now. <laughs> it's so exciting. 
Um, this is Oakley, and I have to apologize to you all. I am doing horrible at my own cal. Uh, I'm so sorry, Melinda. Cast on itis has seriously, it's got the worst of me, the best of me, worst of me, I don't even know, over the last week. I've just been bouncing all over the place. Um, so I, suffice that to say, to say I, will, I will not be finished with a pair of socks before Emerson comes out. But that's okay. Um, that's all right. I'm enjoying the process because these are gorgeous, gorgeous, uh, just gorgeous socks. So I am, hopefully that's not too super blown out. Uh, I am knitting these out of Jessica Jones, um, uh, a casual fashion queen. I'm sorry. I had a brain fart. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, and you'll see it again a little bit later. Um, but here is the progress I've made on Oakley. Um, and I did not, I did not mark my progress from where I showed you guys last time, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'm kind of going off how many repeats into the pattern I am, and I believe I put in a couple more repeats. I keep, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, eventually you guys, I'll get, I'll get this together. Uh, but it's beautiful. I hope it's not super blown out. Um, the back has this fantastic, um, little bit of ribbing, or not ribbing, um, garter, almost garter, uh, but it's got wonderful little, uh, pearl ridges down the back, um, and you are supposed to continue that until you hit the heel, but if you've watched previously, you know that I only had about 88 grams left of Jessica Jones. And so I split that into two cakes and I just want to knit the entirety of the rest of the yarn that I have. And so I'm not entirely sure where my heel is going to end up being. Um, I probably could have gone a little bit further um, with this now knowing, but I wasn't sure. So um, I did stop at a certain point. Um, and then I will of course insert a afterthought heel because I'm just going to continue in pattern all the way down until I run out of yarn. And at that point, I will put a contrasting color in for the toes and then I will mark for the afterthought heel and use that contrasting color for the heel. So these socks really, I have no idea how long they're going to be. <laughs> but they're going to be beautiful. Um, it's got a two by two ribbing. Uh, across the top, which is my favorite. Um, honestly, I couldn't even tell you. I'm sorry, Melinda, please don't. Please don't yell at me. Um, I, I honestly, when I work patterns, I don't even look at what they say to do for the cuff. I just do a two by two all the time. I know that's my favorite. I know that's what I prefer. I know it fits me well. Um, so there's been a lot of patterns that I've knit that have maybe a twisted ribbing or a one by one, things like that. I don't even, I don't even read it. <laughs> I cast on and I do my two by two ribbing. So hopefully, let me see if I can put this on my hand. Uh, I am knitting these on my Chiaogu Red Lace US size twos. See if I can open that. So yes, look at that beautiful patterning, you guys. Oh, it's so pretty. So, so pretty. Just fantastic. And then this, I love so much. It gives it just, just a bit of texture. It's going to be so fun. And I'm really hoping that with the amount of yarn I have, um, that these will be tall enough to be almost boot socks. Uh, so this fall or winter when I am cozy in my hand knit socks, um, maybe this part will be sticking out of my boot. <laughs> I am really excited. So I adore this pattern. It's Oakley. Um, again, the only way you can get it is if you purchase the entire sock club um, through Melinda. But like I said, it is a fantastic, fantastic grouping of uh, patterns and you will not regret it. Um, I think she will release Oakley as a single pattern next year. So early next year. So um, again, the, the two that I've knit so far from it, I adore. So please, if you're into pattern socks, run and go get it. You won't be disappointed. Move along to another sock whip, shall we? Guys, do you even understand how excited I am that I don't have to like check the time or be like, 
Oh no, my camera is not recording and I've been talking for 15 minutes and didn't even know it. This is, oh, this is such a game changer. <laughs> I apologize. I'm a mess. Uh, this uh, sock is living in my pineapple bag by Luna Pie Designs. Yeah, but look at that. Uh, my Leon Alexander pin and my Grocery Girls pin. I can show you things. <laughs> um, but I adore this bag. Uh, like I said, it is Luna Pie Designs, and uh, she is a local Nebras Nebraskian? Nebraskan? I should know how to say that. Uh, I should also mention, I did not at the top of the episode, apologies, like I said, I'm really excited today. Um, I live in Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska to be specific. Um, I live here with my husband and our two kiddos. Uh, one is heading into high school, the other is heading into middle school, Lord help me. Um, and we have a dog and a cat. So there you go. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you more socks now. The yarn I am using for these beautiful socks is Cat Sandwich Fibers, and this is her July, June, June, June uh, club, sock club, and it is Where's My Floaties? Oh, and it's so bright. I hope you guys in post that um, it's looking pretty blown out to me um, on the viewfinder, um, so I'm hoping that I can, I can work that out for you guys. Um, Again, this is going to take me a couple episodes to kind of practice and get used to, but I started these as two at a time socks because my knitting brain person, spirit animal, I, what? Um, I really want to be able to knit two at a time socks. There's something about it that just having two socks at the end of it all um, is just great because then you don't have to worry about second sock syndrome um, like we all know I struggle with. Um, but it's just too fiddly. I've tried. I've tried multiple times. It just doesn't work for me. Um, so I did start these as two at a time. I've since split them and I am working on them concurrently. This one has the most progress so far. This is a Hermione's uh, everyday sock pattern. And look at the speckles. I am knitting these toe up, obviously. Um, you can Check out my How I Knit Toe Up Socks video if you're interested in seeing how I do that. Um, but it's essentially, it's a Turkish cast on. Um, and then I do my toe increases just a bit differently than a make one left, make one right. Um, because I, I can't pay attention enough to do that and to know where I'm at. So Hermione's every day. Um, flippin' beautiful. MJ uh, of Cat Sandwich Fibers is just a dying queen. Um, I love everything she does. And so this is the, this is the other one. Um, it doesn't have quite as much work. Again, I'm working them concurrently, but that means that I'm just grabbing them out of the bag at random and kind of putting in a few rows. So this did get some work, um, during game night last week, uh, last weekend, um, because Hermione's everyday pattern is simple enough to be able to kind of mindlessly do. Um, I have to I have to check every now and again kind of where I'm at. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's easy enough to just kind of pull out and work on if I'm chatting with people or playing a game or what have you. Um, so it's been a joy and I love, love, love the yarn so much. Um, here's her little cat sandwich tag, which is so cute. And it is her trusty base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And again, the colorway is Where's My Floaties? So, yay. Look at that. And I did get the uh, matching mini or the coordinating mini. It's, <laughs> it's in here somewhere um, that I will go ahead and throw the heels and toes, or not toes, I'm sorry, the heels uh, and maybe the cuffs. We'll see. So this one has quite a bit more work put in, um, so I will likely concentrate on this one for just a little while. So loving these, so they're going along very nicely. Um, this is the first Hermione's Everyday Pattern that I have uh, ever knit, and I am thoroughly enjoying it. More socks. <laughs>
<laughs> this is a brand new cast on that just happened last night. Um, however, this is probably not a brand new to the to the podcast uh, or um, you will have seen this before. Let's just say that. Um, it is living in my sushi bag from Sugar Tots. There's my pin swag. Um, love it. This Foxy Nerd is from Tea Turtle. They sell t-shirts um, and all kinds of fun things. And uh, then I have a, a Love Your Junk uh, Love Your Junk pin from uh, Kemper Ray or Raybot. Um, <clears throat> so let's do the yarn. First, uh, this gorgeous, gorgeous thing is from Yarn Cafe Creations, who is Christy. She is uh, the half of the duo of the Girls in the Yarn Cafe. Um, and if you guys are familiar with Tristan, who is Dragon Horde Yarn, uh, Christy is her wonderful mother, and I adore those two. And um, <clears throat> a while back, she, <clears throat> excuse me, a while back they had a um, There Is Room For Everyone, um, oh, what was it, a movement of sorts um, where we wanted to, or they wanted to make a statement in the maker world that there is room for everyone. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details. You guys can definitely go back to previous episodes. Um, of mine or go check out theirs for uh, more information if you'd like, but this is her There is Room for Everyone colorway from Yarn Cafe Creations, and it's beautiful. Um, I did finish the first sock quite a while ago and just have not cast on. Second sock syndrome got the best of me, so I did not cast on the second, but last night I did. I wanted so bad, and I'll show you guys <laughs> Here in just a little bit, I caked up uh, one of my recent acquisitions, and it was literally calling to me. Um, I wanted, I wanted to cast it on so bad, but I'm like, no, I'm gonna be responsible. I'm not going to succumb to cast on itis. I'm not going to start another new project. No. So I was like, hey, I'll cast on for one of my lonely socks. So this is about as far as I got. Uh, last night we did go over to uh, um, some families and uh, just kind of sat around chatting and having a good time. And so this is about as far as I made it, um, which is not bad. It's a start. It's on the needles. That means um, that means it'll it'll happen soon, right? So I will show you the finished socks so you can get a better idea of what this colorway looks like. So here is the finished sock, and these I am knitting cuff down. I bounce back and forth. Um, I have no standard way of knitting socks, um, but again, two by two rib, just a vanilla sock. I did a slip stitch uh, heel flap and gusset. And then just my standard decrease for the toe. So it's just a just a standard toe. I don't know what the word is for this. But yes. So this colorway is beautiful, Christy. Um, I don't think it's available anymore. I think you had to have purchased it during that time. Um, I could be wrong, so go check out her shop. Uh, but I do know that she just released a whole bunch of... Um, fall colors and like horror movie inspired colorways and they're all so fantastic. Um, I'm definitely going to be grabbing myself some but so anyway this is the finished sock. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, it's so outside my comfort zone as far as colors so I'm really enjoying that um, just to have something new. So this will be my new vanilla sock knitting. Um, because you always have to have a vanilla sock on the go. And I am knitting these on DPNs. Again, uh, I have no rhyme or reason for the things that I do. Um, other than I switch it up, I need variety in my life. Variety is the spice of life, in my opinion. Um, one can't be too monotonous. Um, otherwise, I get bored. Which is probably why I struggle so bad with cast-onitis. 
I need to have 20 project bags on the floor next to where I sit so I can just be like, yep, that one, and have no plan. Um, but I am knitting these on DPNs. These are my Knit Pro Zings, and they are a US 1, which is my preferred um, needle size when knitting socks. However, I am known to jump up to a 2 for funsies. So, yay! New, new cast on, but not a new project. So I am really excited that I am being responsible and one step closer to maybe having another finished object. So Next up on the whip train, like I said, it's gonna be a long episode, you guys. Uh, I got lots of things on the needles, very much bounced all over the place all week. Um, this is living in my bag uh, from Rock Islander. And I adore this bag I've got. My cat sandwich pin, another Raybot Love Your Junk, another Grocery Girl Sock Talk, and uh, that is a, a Yarnold Palmer from Shelly Can. Um, inside this bag, I have my Find Your Fade. And I finally, finally, a few episodes ago, I had finally cast on for the Find Your Fade shawl. Um, it's happening. I'm doing it. So... I did not make a ton of progress on it, but I am getting close to introducing the third color, so I thought I would share it with you guys today. It started with Jessica Jones, which is where the other grams went from my Oakley sock, um, so I am using the leftovers from my fade um, for those Oakley socks. So I started with Jessica Jones. It is absolutely beautiful with just the palest pink shades ever. I hope that's going to pick up and come across to you guys. Um, and I moved into Plank and Stella in the Tropical Fruit Cup. And last time I showed you, I was where the marker is. So I did put a little bit of progress into it. I just started the lace section um, or the lace portion of the second section. So um, it's no longer in thong underwear territory. Um, it's kind of become... I don't even know. I heard someone refer to it as a uterus. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but it's getting to the point where it's like becoming a shawl for real now. Um, I am doing a different um, center stitch than the pattern calls for. I am doing a center double decrease. So I will get this nice um, stitch down the spine. Um, and you can find that information on the Ravelry project page if you're interested in how I'm doing that. It does tweak the pattern just a little bit and I kind of have to pay a bit more attention during the lace portion um, because you are, the center double decrease happens at a different point than what the pattern calls for for uh, that decrease down the middle, um, if that makes any sense. So there is a little bit of thinking involved um, but that's okay. Um, so I made it successfully through this lace portion with that center double decrease. Um, so I am really hoping that this is just as successful. So um, I am knitting these on a uh, US size 4 3.5 millimeter. These are my Chiaogu twist interchangeables, which I am in love with. You guys know that I'm a Chiaogu fangirl. Um, and yeah, let's see, I will show you guys the yarn that I am going to be wrapping up with soon. As soon as I finish this lace, I will then be melting into the third color. Um, but this is such a beautiful skein. Um, so bright. Um, I, I tend to do more blues and purples and cool colors. So it's been really fun to kind of step outside of that and just do something super bright, super summery. Um, and I believe for the third color, I'm going to be working into this beautiful orange shade, which is something that I dyed up quite a while ago. Um, I actually, you can see it's got a little bit of ramen noodle action going on because I started a pair of socks with these ages ago um, and then ripped it out. 
<laughs> uh, but I think these two together are just going to be gorgeous. And again, so bright, so bright. Who even am I? <laughs> so yes, that is my uh, Find Your Fade. And oh, I should mention that is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. Uh, however, I believe you are all absolutely 100% uh, in the know of what your Find Your Fade is and who that is by. One more thing to show you guys today as far as whips go, and it is a brand new cast on, and it is probably the most exciting project I have right now. I cannot stop. Story time. <laughs> Before I show you this uh, super exciting whip, I do want to share with you a super sad story. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you may have seen a while back that I put up a post about my Tanya sweater. Uh, Tanya is a beautiful top uh, design by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks, and I cast that on quite a while ago, um, kind of put it on the back burner, finally decided to break it out and just put in so much love and work um, on it. I was about three quarters of the way through... Um, through the lace section and I went to lay it out because I wanted to see what it all looked like. I was going to lay it out and do like a pretty Instagram photo for you guys because um, I was so proud of the work that I had put in. It was coming out so fantastic. Um, and then I noticed, I'll insert a photo, uh, I noticed that somewhere along the way I twisted the heck out of it. And I checked so hard you guys when I cast on and when I joined again. So I know People on Instagram, uh, you, you guys were so wonderful with your with your support and your well wishes uh, on that post because my heart was broken. Um, but I guess it, it is possible to twist those um, even like within the first couple rows. So maybe I just, I don't know what I did. I don't know why it took me so long to even notice what I did. Like I put in, I was like 50 rows in you guys. <laughs> How did I not see this? <laughs> um, so I frogged. There was no coming back from that. There was no even, there was no way. Uh, there was no coming back. So I frogged it. Um, my heart was broken. I decided that I needed a break from the Tanya. Um, it was just too soon. So I wanted to try to cast on another Shu Shui Shrug. Um, a while back, I was co-hosting a cow with um, some wonderful ladies, Girls in the Yarn Cafe, and uh, Hannah from the Corner of Craft, and Meg from Bad Wolf Girl Studios in the Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast. We were all knitting up the Shoo Shui Shrug, um, uh, and I failed miserably. <laughs> I didn't get very far until I just fell out of love with it, I frogged it, and I did not look back, um, and I felt terrible, but... It is what it is. If you're not loving a project and it's just not calling to you and you don't think that you're going to use the final thing, don't knit it. Don't crochet it. Life's too short to not enjoy what you're working on, right? Um, so anyway, uh, recently Kay with um, the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, she finished hers uh, pretty recently and it is so beautiful. So she was showing off hers and I was like, all right, I really want one of those. I want to just wrap myself in it and cuddle in it this fall. I just, I want it. So uh, I recast on using my yarn from my Tanya and uh, which was my hand dyed yarn. Uh, I just, I, again, I, I was not loving the colors I chose. I don't know what it was. I don't know if maybe the Shushri Shrug when it starts off, maybe maybe it just takes a little while before you're kind of seeing, because it is brioche, um, it's a lot of garter stitch and a lot of brioche, um, maybe it just takes a while to kind of see how the colors are going to work together, and maybe I just don't have enough faith that I frog too soon, I don't know what the deal is, uh, but I frogged it and decided, you know what, I think I'm going to try to knit this with, um, some single ply yarn, because I do love single ply, and it will be so soft and so fluffy to wrap up in, um, so, all that to say, I cast on a 
Another Shu Shui Shrug. This is actually my fourth cast on. Um, originally, when we were doing the cal, I cast on with um, that uh, Tropical Fruit Cup from Plank and Stella that's now in my Find My Fade. I cast on with that and another one of her yarns and it just wasn't enough contrast. So I frogged it. I actually cast on again with Jessica Jones, which is also in my fade, <laughs> and uh, just a charcoal background color um, for the dark color. And while I like those two colors together, it just wasn't speaking to me. Um, Jessica Jones needed to be something else, and I'm so happy with what I actually um, saved it for. But uh, then I cast on, of course, with my yarn, and I'll show you. Um, this was the yarn in my Tanya. And it's so beautiful. I just wanted it to be something. Um, I cast it on with uh, a skein, uh, another skein of mine that you can find in my shop. This is Drift. It is just, it's white. Um, so I cast these two things on. Was really excited about it. Was not loving how they worked up together. This is a little bit too variegated with some bare patches in it. Um, that they're just, it wasn't popping enough for me, um, if that makes any sense. Um, so, I have been hoarding, coveting, hoarding, um, some of my Volenbein yarns, who is Kristen, uh, of the Yarngasm podcast. Um, I have, like, a whole little stash sec section just full of her yarn, um, and I have been waiting for the perfect project for it. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm having such a difficult time with this Shushri Shrug. I want to pick some yarn that I'm going to just love working with. It's going to make me smile every time I pick it up. Um, and just hopefully that specialness, um, special aspect of the yarn to me. Um, not that the other ones I was using weren't special, but I feel like I don't have to explain this. I think you guys know what I mean. Um, and again, it's a single ply, so maybe that was just enough of a difference to kind of make the light bulb click on. But I pulled out my skein of Goth Day Cake uh, from Kristen of Volenbine Yarns. And it's so beautiful. It's coming across quite a bit lighter than it is in real life. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just this beautiful, muted gray with loads of different color speckles in there. Um, <clears throat> and I'm using that for my main color. Here's her, her tag. There is Goth Day Cake and her Nouveau base, which is her single ply 100% uh, merino base. And I decided to use um, my leftover uh, hedgehog fibers which is the urchin colorway, and it's what I used in my Zweig. So this was the uh, con contrast color in the yoke of my Zweig. It's just almost a complete bare, um, but there are some just super subtle pinky and purple speckles in there. Um, so these two together, I was like, yes, let's do this. Let's do this. And because I only have about a half of a half a skein left of this, um, I do have some other um, leftover single ply. Anyway, if I need to use um, some more of my leftovers that I have, um, I'll just grab those and kind of work those in. If um, I don't feel like those work in well enough, I will just use Drift on Lofty Singles, which is um, which comes from my shop. So. Anyway, stop talking about all of this. Just show us the dang thing, right? <laughs> um, I am a few repeats in and adoring it. This is the uh, front side or the, the right side, I suppose. Um, ugh. I love Goth Day Cake so much. Just the colors in it. Oh, my Lanta. Um, I'm so happy. Something about these two together. Something about the single ply. Something about maybe the timing that this happened. The pattern's just clicking. And I am enjoying this so much. This is the wrong side. Oops, sorry. Um, which is 
the lighter side in this case, um, which is super cool all on its own too. Um, but yeah, I just, I love it. Um, I think it's gonna be so fun to wear um, once it's done. I'm gonna love the colors. It's gonna be not so loud that it can't just be thrown on over anything, I think. I think it'll be neutral enough um, or go with enough of the things that I already wear. Um, and it's gonna work out great. And on here, I have a little progress keeper from that Melinda sent me. Whoa, there we go. Look at the little unicorn. <laughs> um, Melinda, I will get into this a little bit in acquisitions, but she was so amazing and sent me just such a wonderful box of goodies. She was cleaning out her office and um, found a whole bunch of fiber and stuff like that. that um, she knows I've been spinning up a storm, so thank you, Melinda. Um, it was such a surprise, but she also included this little unicorn uh, progress keeper that I could not wait to put on a project. So, of course, just to add to the magic that this already was, uh, I tossed it on here. So, I should mention the Shoo Shoo Shrug is um, a pattern by Suzanne Summer. Um, or Sosu Knits on Instagram. She is a, another wonderful pattern designer. Um, you guys should definitely check her out if you're not familiar. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully have inserted a photo of a finished shoe, shoe, shoe shui shrug. <laughs> so you guys can kind of see what this will look like because right now it's, it's hard to tell, but it is essentially, if you guys are unfamiliar, it's really a giant shawl with arms. It's going to be amazing. Um, I am knitting these once again on my Chiaogu Twist Interchangeables and this is a US 6 or a 4.0 uh, millimeter which is I believe what the pattern calls for. So oh, I'm loving it. I'm adoring it. I'm having so much fun. I cannot wait to make more progress on it. Oh, I just love it. And it is living in my mermaid narwhal bag from Brianna Lentz. Um, she sent it to me quite a while ago. Ah, we did a swap and uh, so happy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I have on here my crazy sock lady pin. Naturally, since she was really the inspiration to recast this on, I have uh, two pins from Hannah, who is the corner of craft, and uh, the dyer behind chromatic yarns. Yes. So I spread my pin love across all my bags, so all of them have a bit of swag on there. That's all I have as far as whips go uh, to share with you guys this week. Holy moly, I'm already at 50 minutes. This is insane. I'm so happy I haven't had to stop and restart and do all that stuff. I can just talk and be natural and be me. And, oh, this is great. <laughs> uh, uh, let's jump into spinning, but I'm going to jump into that to say that there has been no more spinning this week, unfortunately. I have failed miserably during Tour de Fleece. Um, I just... I, my heart has been in all of my knitting projects, so my spinning has kind of fallen to the wayside. However, I have a metric button. Like a mountain, a mountain's worth of fiber. So um, I'm going to carve out some time to do some spinning this weekend. Hopefully get um, the fiber on the bobbin uh, that's been on there for much too long. Um, hopefully get that off and maybe at a place where I can ply it. Um, and then some of that um, fiber that was sent to me from Melinda is literally staring at me, like calling to be thrown on. So um, as far as acquisitions go, hmm, <clears throat> I don't believe I have any of those. I do have some things in the mail that have not made it here yet. Um, like I mentioned, Melinda, who is so sweet, um, sent me just 
the best box of goodies. I was so shocked. I My jaw hit the floor. I just, I can't even. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, Fiber. I'm not going to sit down and show it all to you guys, um, but you will see it uh, if you follow me on Instagram and uh, here on the podcast as I get it spun up. I will share it with you then. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's all I have as far as acquisitions. Um, like I said, I do have a few things on the way in the mail. Um, I purchased some new sock blockers uh, because I have too many socks and I'm running low. <laughs> what do you do when you run out of needles? Buy more. What do you do when you run out of sock blockers? Buy more. Um, I have some yarn on the way. I have the July Club from Cat Sandwich Fibers that I got my shipping notification for. I can't wait to see that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And some other things, some other goodies. So next week. Like I said, I'm trying to rein it in uh, and be just a bit better. I need to work through my stash um, because I am going to VKL um, Vogue Knitting Live in Minneapolis in November, and I know that I am just going to be a whirlwind in there. So I'm really trying to be better um, about my purchases, at least up until then. Um, that being said, I'm still still, still buying things. <laughs> um, can't stop, won't stop. Uh, so yeah, I think, um, at this point I'm just going to share with you guys a few things that went up in, uh, my recent shop update, which happened last night, um, on loftyloopsyarns.com and, uh, then chatter about some life stuff. And then at the very end, I will, uh, share with you guys what the plan is for the 500 subscriber giveaway. So if you are not interested in any of that, um, and you were just here for the knitting content, that's totally fine. I understand. I wish you uh, a very happy week and a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, and I thank you guys for sticking with me so far. Um, if you guys, uh, are into that, then let's get started. So Lofty Loops Yarns headquarter news. I did have a, a good size shop update last night. Um, I've mentioned previously that I quit doing the scheduled shop updates and I was just throwing things up in the shop um, as they became ready. So they would be there if uh, you were ever perusing and just kind of window shopping, they would be there. Um, however, I have introduced a sport weight yarn to the shop. So I uploaded and added all of those things together. So that happened last night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. There is still quite a bit left in the shop. Um, so if you are into sport weight yarns, definitely go check that out and see if there's anything you want to bring home. Um, I will get those shipped out to you on Monday morning. There will be more sport, uh, lofty sport coming to the shop in the next few days. I will announce on Instagram uh, when I'm going to be loading more, but I do have plans this weekend to dye up Neptune on Sport because that was requested. I want to dye some of my speckled yarns um, on Sport and get those out to you, some of my colorways, and I'm going to be playing in the dye pots and coming up with some new fall colors. So keep an eye out on Instagram uh, if you're interested in any of that, um, but for now I will show you what went in. I have this beautiful beautiful bronzed beauty and um, it's just like I said a beautiful bronze color it's got um, some darker areas some speckles in there but it is a very um, like almost like bronzer that you use on your face um, it's kind of that color so bronze beauty and this is, uh, again, Lofty Sport, which is 100% superwash merino. There is no nylon in my sport base. And it is 328 yards uh, per 100 gram. So this is Bronze Beauty. Again, getting so blown out. I hope it's not so, so bright uh, when I go to edit this. And I have some Rose Gold which is another beautiful colorway. And it is just that, um, a gold color with bits of pinky rose in there. And speckles, of course, because I can't not speckle things. I am a speckle addict. <laughs> uh, so this is beautiful. Look at the stitch definition on this sport weight, you guys. 
I love it. It is a three ply. Um, it is the only three ply that I carry in the shop. And I must say, I adore it. Um, I may actually end up looking to get a three ply sock weight yarn um, because, oh, my Lanta. Look at that definition. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I uh, dyed up uh, petals which has been a popular color way recently. Um, I dyed that up on Sport as well. And uh, you'll know if you've been a recent viewer of the podcast, um, Melinda released a pattern recently, which is Secret Garden, and it was beautiful. I had a giveaway here on the podcast and in the Ravelry group um, for a skein of petals as well as her Secret Garden pattern. Um, and yeah, it's been really well received. You guys have really been loving this color um, with with good reason. It is beautiful. Um, it is just the palest pink um, or almost like a, it's like a creamy, a creamy pink, if that makes any sense. Um, so I have to show you, I do have three color kits up with Bronze Beauty and rose gold and petals um, because it is it they just look beautiful together but on sport can you even oh my lanta I just love these they're so soft so delicate so beautiful and you guys I have to say <laughs> as I was getting these uh, skeined up and laying them out and doing photos and what have you I really want to knit a rose cardigan with these colors. Anyway, so these are all available on Sport in the shop. Um, I also have petals on Lofty Glitz, which is my silver Stellina base fingering weight yarn. It is 70, uh, 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% uh, silver stellina. And you guys, petals on lofty glitz is just making my life. So those are available. I also have just a play. Um, I ordered some new dies and wanted to play with them. So I have a loophole, which is a one of a kind, uh, will not be repeated or dyed again. Um, just to play in the dye pots, but this is Parakeet. And this is on my Lofty Sock Base, which is an 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 2-ply. So just very, like, very Parakeet-like colors. <laughs> uh, some blue speckles in there, um, this bright yellowy green. Um, yeah, and a kind of a gray-blue, so... This, yeah, this is, uh, like I said, one of a kind um, up in the shop as a loophole. Cannot be repeated, uh, will not be dyed again. And I do have one Misfits game that went up. Um, it is in my um, Mermaid Lagoon colorway, which is one of my most popular colorways. However, this one turned out just a smidgen different. I don't know what happened, um, but I could not... I could not list it as Mermaid Lagoon, um, so it is a misfit skein, and it is just a smidge marked down because of that, but you can see Mermaid Lagoon is this beautiful, light, light, delicate teal with purple speckles um, and some grays in there. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, and you can see the reason for the being a misfit is because it got a little bit darker blue than I wanted it to. Um, I don't know if that's the way the dye broke, um, or maybe I had some some ninja dye that snuck around and made it in places it wasn't supposed to. Um, but there is just a bit of a blue tinge to this uh, skein. So I did not want to list it as Mermaid Lagoon because um, it is it's a bit different than the recipe, but. Still beautiful in its own right, and this is on Lofty DK, which is my DK base. It is a 75 Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, 4-ply, 246 yards per 100 grams. This will get you at least two hats. 
So that's in the shop. Um, there are loads of other things in there for you guys to check out. Lots of sock yarn. Um, like I said, more sport will be coming soon. Um, but yeah, if you want to go scope out some things, take some stuff home over the weekend, like I said, I will get those shipped out on Monday. All right, let's get into some life stuff chatter. Uh, what's been going on this week? Let's see. I went to game night uh, with some work ladies and uh, their spouses last weekend, and that was a ton of fun. Um, always a good time to sit down and play some games with a group of people. Um, I, of course, took a sock to work on like I do. Um, and yes, played a brand new game um, called brand new to me game called Telestrations. It's a mix between Pictionary and um, Telephone. So you each have a book. I think up to eight people can play. You each get a book. It's a dry erase book um, and it has different pages in there and you draw a card and you draw like you would in Pictionary whatever word you chose off the card that you had. Um, however, then you close the book and you pass it to your left. So then the person on your left has to look at your drawing and make a guess as to what they think that you drew and then write that word down. And then they pass that along and that person cannot look at the original drawing, but must look at the word the second person wrote and draw that. And then it kind of goes around the circle in that fashion until it makes it back to the uh, original drawer. And uh, then you kind of go through and you flip through and see just, just how much it spiraled. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. They do have an after dark version, which uh, is adults only. And that is hysterical. Um, I definitely need to brush up on my uh, human body parts drawing because apparently I am not very good at that. <laughs> Um, again, adults only, over 18. Um, it's such a blast. If you guys haven't played it, I recommend um, checking it out. I think Target carries it. Um, otherwise, you can probably find it online. But um, I'm definitely going to be purchasing a copy for us to have um, to kind of share with other people. So, so much fun. Um, yeah, brush up on your drawing skills, folks. <laughs> Um, oh, and you are timed. I think you get a minute to draw. So, I mean, you're under some pressure. Things get weird. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun, though. And otherwise, not a whole terribly lot has gone on. I wrapped up a wholesale order that I was working on getting filled. So that will be heading out to uh, Omaha, Nebraska, I believe, tomorrow. So if you guys are in the area, go check out uh, Imagine It Yarn Shop uh, in Omaha and... Um, Carla will have some new pretties to share with you all up there. I Seriously, I've just been honestly knitting. Just knitting. Coming home from work um, and just knitting. And um, I am going to have to relocate my office um, here shortly. Um, we are going to be having some housemates for a while. Um, and it's it's... It's fine. I'm excited. Um, we have some family that just needs needs a bit of needs a bit of a boost, I guess, or a little bit of um, kind of getting their feet under them. And we've all gone through it when we were that age. And um, I remember my husband and I going through it with two little ones, and it it was rough. We made it. Um, we're great. We're doing well. Um, but yeah, when he was. I was not working at all. I was a full-time student, full-time mother of two little children. He was the only one working full-time um, at, uh, he was a manager, you know, at a fast food joint. So um, we, it was rough. <laughs> it was rough. Uh, that was quite a while ago. Um, you know, I graduated. I work as a web developer um, at a fantastic company here in Lincoln, Nebraska, a great tech company. They're just so fantastic to work for. Um, I've been there for uh, just about seven years now, and my husband now owns his own construction business. So 
like I said, <laughs> it was rough, but you persevere and uh, you make it. And now we have some family members that are kind of going through the same situation. And we have the room here. Um, so they are going to come stay with us for a little bit and kind of get their feet under them. So uh, that being said, I am losing my office, um, which is fine. Um, that's okay. It's, it's so large right now. It's a very large uh, bedroom that I, that I've turned into an office. Um, so I've just kind of spread out. <laughs> like, it's a mess in here. Um, I would love to show you guys a little craft room tour, office space area, uh, but that's not going to happen. Um, it's a mess. Um, perhaps when I get all moved to my new space and get reorganized, I will share that with you guys then. But um, so that being said, next weekend, uh, I may or may not be able to podcast. I am hoping to. I may change my podcasting schedule just a little bit to kind of rearrange um, since they will be here on the weekends now, obviously. Um, I don't, I won't have a really good place to kind of come where it's quiet and I don't want to interrupt them and things like that. So um, we'll see. Uh, it's going to take probably a couple few weeks to kind of get into the swing of things, but you will likely be seeing a new setup for the podcast uh, once I get all moved and reshuffled and uh, resettled. So, whew, life stuff. I believe that is everything I have to share with you guys uh, this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the new camera is working out well. I hope uh, that you guys are going to be able to hear me okay. Um, I will be purchasing a... Um, an external microphone for this so that will just elevate uh, that a little bit now that I have a camera that can accept an external microphone. Um, so that's super exciting but like I said just the game changer of being able to kind of see what you guys see and share things with you in better detail. I am really stoked and I hope you guys are too. Um, so if you enjoyed this, if you think it looks better, if you are happy with how it is now, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That just lets me know that all the work I am putting in and the things that I am acquiring to make this as good as it can be for you, that means I'm on the right track and you guys are appreciating it. Um, also, if you thumbs up this video, YouTube will know to uh, suggest other videos like this to you that you may not be familiar with. So that just helps your searching algorithm and the things suggested to you, as well as help gets my podcast out to people that may not know about me. Um, if you guys have not already subscribed, please go ahead and uh, hit the subscription button. And if you want to get notified of when uploads happen, you can hit the bell and then you will get a little notification. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you that has subscribed. Um, if you guys comment on the videos, I try to respond to every one. I appreciate your comments. I read through each one um, and I love hearing what you're working on and kind of your response to uh, this one-sided conversation I'm having here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love hearing from you guys and uh, I just appreciate all of you. So. Before I sign off, I want to share with you guys the 500 subscriber giveaway that is going to happen. I want you guys to leave a comment down below and tell me. Ooh. If you had to craft with only one color for the rest of your life, what color would that be? That's a good one. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the new camera situation and let please tell me to be entered in the 500 uh, subscriber giveaway. Let me know if you could only choose one color out of the spectrum of colors to craft with for the rest of your life. What color would that be? And next week I will be drawing someone from the comment thread on this video to share a wonderful prize package with. I don't have all the pieces put together yet, so I'm not going to share it. Um, however, I will put a post up on Instagram in the next couple days once I get it all uh, thrown together for you uh, and let you guys know that this will be the 500 subscriber giveaway package. Um, it will be a project bag, I can tell you that. It will be at least one skein of yarn. Um, Maybe some fiber? Maybe I'll throw in some fiber. Lord knows I have a lot of fiber hanging around. Um, and yeah, maybe some stitch markers. 
we're gonna whip up something good. It's gonna be good. Like I said, still waiting on a couple things, um, but I will post a picture as soon as I get everything together. So yay, 500 subscribers. Thank you all so much. I appreciate each and every one of you, like I said. So leave that comment below on this video um, between now and next Saturday morning. And uh, I'll go ahead and draw a winner for that on the podcast next week. So yay, it is open to everyone. Um, but I, you must be a subscriber of the podcast to win. I will say that. Um, but shipping worldwide. So feel free to enter no matter where you live. And uh, I will chat with you guys next week. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful rest of your weekend. Happy knitting. Bye.